Okay. All right. Well, there it is. How are you? I am well. Really? Yourself? Yes, I am. Did you bring a subject to talk about for 20 or 30 minutes of the show? Uh, uh, surprisingly, no, because they've cut our time. So I just uh, let's just just duke it out with callers. We're I going thinking. to calls. How about that? Good what deal. do you think? Yeah. Is it Venaris? Yes, this is C. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Just fine. Pretty good. Oh, um, first I got to say I love you guys' show. I'm a recent, recent atheist myself, you know, former Christian, former Muslim, both as a matter of fact. Um, I wish you guys could, um, I could see your show live in Mississippi, but, you know, if there's some hardcore Christians down here, they'd probably go to the studio with pitches and, uh, you know, torches and pitchforks to <laughs> the uh, studio wow. and try to stop it, so I wouldn't... We'll just plant it. Frank in their path and they'll, it just, you yeah. I, and, and thanks for mentioning the studio. I have to put this reminder out real quick, and that is that now that we moved to the big studio, not only have things changed, including the telephone number, but there's room for actually people to come down to the studio and watch the show live. So yeah. if you're in the Austin area and want to do that, you can go to channelaustin.org for Lots more information. Of go ahead with your question, Benar. Sorry. Okay. Um, in your past shows, I know you all mentioned briefly about the, uh, the Christian story of Jesus and how it possibly could have been influenced by earlier religions. I know you mentioned the Zeitgeist movie or whatever. I and, mentioned um, Zeitgeist as an abomination that's a big steaming pile of crap, but yeah. Okay, well, do you guys agree that, you know, that um, a lot of early religions have stories of the sons of God helping mankind, and, you know, they're being born by pure or virgin women and miracle workers, you know, the uh, prophets being miracle workers or what have you? Right. Um, you guys kind of agree with that as well, possibly? Well, we, sure, we, we have examples of lots of other myths that share common elements. Okay. Now, um, I, I get into it with a lot of Christians down here because I'm an atheist myself, and then I tell them, well, this is one of the smaller reasons why I just don't buy into the whole Jesus being the Son of God thing. And then they say, well, you don't have to worry about that because this is actually the work of the devil. Because the devil had some foresight, and he saw the events that was going to happen of Jesus' life, and he encouraged people that came before Jesus to write down these stories. And what has happened is... Um, uh, he said he had some kind of master plan to where, you know, after Jesus died, he was going to come back and say, yeah, you guys, I know you didn't see Jesus, but don't worry, it's a mythology, because look, it's, you know, kind of from early mythologies and things of that nature. So, yeah. well, um, well, my question would be, and I know you guys, um, I was listening to an interview, you're talking with an individual about the devil, and of course, mm -hmm. like me, you know, you see him as a... Here's a what I ask procedure. Christians who, who hit me with that one, or something similar to that. I say, is the devil more powerful than God? Okay. Inevitably, they say no. In which case, I respond, well, then how can anything the devil wants to do possibly inconvenience or upset any of God's plans? How can the devil's master plan in any way supersede or uh, thwart God's plan? Hmm. I mean, God is all-powerful. Christians insist that the devil is somehow less, is, is not all-powerful in the way God is, but yet somehow the devil is still able to inconvenience and... Uh, disconcert God's plans and thwart God's right. plans and, and essentially be a nuisance and a menace to God, e even though he's not as powerful. You know, this is one of those situations where omnipotence, suddenly the definition changes when it becomes, the real definition of it becomes inconvenient. Omnipotence trumps non-omnipotence at all times. Hmm. So if, if the devil isn't as powerful as God, then nothing the devil could do could possibly bother God, could possibly impact what God wants. And so, so to say, oh, well, the devil has a plan and he screws up things for God. Right. Well, then you've either God is not all-powerful, in which case, why, why, why are you bothering to worship him? Or you've just uh, revealed a massive uh, logical <laughs> uh, fuster cluck in your belief system. Although, in, in the interest of, of preparing you as best possible, uh, it's it's very likely that depending on who you're talking to, um, they're not going to find Martin's response daunting at all because the the particular example they're talking about is Satan's going around doing things, and it's not messing with God's plan. It's messing with individuals' ability to perceive the truth, and and I would say that you can still use the same thing. That obviously there's some problem with this God you know, and his ability to communicate the truth to people. Um, and then they, they, they'll come back and say, well, no, 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 that's you, you're willful, whatever. They've, I've, I've seen this used for a number of things. The, actually, it was in the movie, The God Who Wasn't There, um, I think it's Brian Fleming's movie, talked about, you know, the devil planting 
other mythologies that would turn out to be similar to the Jesus story in order to confuse people. And now you've also got people running around saying that the devil's been running around since the beginning of time burying dinosaur bones so that we would find <laughs> them in order to confuse people and lead them to evolution. Um, I, I'd like to know where their evidence for that is and why this isn't just some kind of ad hoc you know, explanation, which, by the way, if, if you don't want to use ad hoc, you can just tell them that they're pulling it out of their butt because that's exactly what they're doing. They're, saying, they're looking at this, and you've pointed out a legitimate, a potentially legitimate problem with what they're saying, and they are inventing out of whole cloth mm -hmm. a response. You can, you can do that ad nauseum. Um, if, if you weren't buying the, you know, the devil did this you know, to confuse you thing, there's another ad hoc explanation that they can come up with afterwards, and eventually it will, tr it will trickle down to you, you're just, you, you have yeah, hard they're just making stuff you up, just don't yeah. want to believe it, you want to be sinful, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's w one of the reasons why if you're going to have conversations like this, you you're need to get people yeah. to define their terms ahead of time, explain what they believe and why, and what sort of evidence they're likely to accept. Because if you begin and they're not going to accept, you know, logical arguments and they're not going to accept, you know, scientifically verifiable facts, you are wasting your time. Um, if, they're, if they're that entrenched, uh, there's unlikely to be anything you could ever say that could convince them. And, it should, and you should also take the effort to point out that you're not going to accept, uh, you know, pull it out of your butt explanations, you want actual evidence. If in fact the devil was going around creating these mythologies in order to confuse people later, what is their evidence to support that claim? Mm -hmm. Right, and, yeah. right. And usually their kind of argument is something to the effect of, you know, in the book of Job, they say, well, God sometimes allows the devil to do crazy stuff like that because it's a, I don't know, some kind of test or something like that, you know. Yeah, usually and that's their kind of mm -hmm. argument. Why, why, would, why would any God do that? Yeah. I mean, what kind of game is this guy playing? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey, I'll let you completely destroy this guy's life just to see what he does. Shouldn't he already know what he's going to do? I mean, that's where you can get back into the omniscience and omniscience yeah. of, yeah. of their God thing. I mean, you know, this whole thing of, oh, well, the devil gets to mess with people's minds and confuse them. He gets to bury dinosaur bones. He gets to do this. He gets to do that. If God's omniscient, then he knows in advance every instance of the devil uh, doing this. He knows the names of every individual whose minds the devil is going to be out there confusing. Uh, so he is allowing this to happen, just as he knew in advance Eve was going to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, and yet he, he went ahead and allowed it to happen. So either evil was part of God's plan all along. Which it was. Which it was. <laughs> in which case you have to wonder, well, why does, does... I mean, he creates this universe and then immediately just overcomplicates everything. Whatever was the point. You'll actually, so, you'll actually find Christians who, who will flatly admit that, in fact, not only does God do things like what mm -hmm. he purportedly does with Job, but that he's given the devil kind of uh, reign launch, yeah. over the earth, and that's because that's the only proper way to <laughs> test us. And, and I would say that not only does this, not, does this make their God particularly uh, immoral uh, mm -hmm. and a bit of a dick, by establishing this system that it couldn't possibly be, be fair. Yeah. We are, yeah. he's allowing us to be pitted against some sort of supernatural being who has, while not all powerful, has lots and lots of power. How can you possibly um, hold people responsible for failing to successfully do battle with a being that can <coughs> supposedly um, trick your senses? Sure. The, very, the very criteria that we use to establish what's real and what's not real. Yeah. Well, right. uh, it, it's kind of like that, um, you know, uh, God is the devil's pimp, you know, when he says yeah. something like a prostitution <laughs> affects us, and then, you know, he expects mm. us, I don't know, you know, that's how it seems kind of yeah. like to me. Yeah, God, and the whole, uh, God is 100%, it's, you know what I'm saying, it'd be a pretty uh, immoral God, and I saw yeah. one, another one of your clips, you know, and I just tell Christians, I was like, okay, once you read the Bible, and you see all these things that God are doing, put yourself in your shoes, and if you have the power of God, and you was almighty and all loving, which I don't see how you could um, be almighty, all loving, and all these always at the same time, it's kind of impossible, but, you know, put yourself in God's shoes, and see if you could come up with an alternative explanation, if you can come up with something better, then, you know, you're better than God. You should Can, take can you come up with a better system? I mean, I could come up with a better system system, in, you know, in a drug-induced coma uh, than, than what they're purporting. But on that note, we've done lots, that many times. Yes. yes. Yeah. we got lots of calls in little time, so thanks a lot for calling. Thank us. you very much. Yeah, yeah, Great keep question. up your good work. Take care.